Hey, Pop. Hey, Pop. What's a giant? What's a what? What's a giant? A giant. Well, it's a great, uh, big, uh, huge, tremendous. Holy smokes. You know, it's uh, like a super colossal. <laughs> This is Russ Hodges and Lon Simmons. Well, in case you had any doubt, that's what a giant is. To some, a giant is a Willie Mays, a Willie McCovey, or a Juan Marichal. But to many others, a giant is a composite face of immortal heroes, a history of legendary exploits performed by titans whose names will live on forever in baseball's wonderland of fun, fame, and fantasies. New York, 1902, trolley cars, organ grinders, horseless carriages, and the indomitable John J. McGraw, the man many baseball experts call the greatest manager who ever lived. For three decades, he led the Giants to the pinnacle of the baseball world. McGraw's incredible qualities of leadership charged his players with his own brand of vitality. He transformed the mediocre to good, and the good to great. When McGraw arrived on the Giants scene, one of the first of these transformations began. He talked a young pitcher out of the idea of becoming a first baseman. The pitcher was Christy Mathewson. Unassuming, soft-spoken Matty was as much a tyrant on the mound as McGraw was in the dugout. Three times he won over 30 games in a season. For 12 straight years, he won 20 or more. In 1905, he pitched three shutouts in the World Series. What's a giant? Well, perhaps it's a Bill Terry, who in 1930 joined the highly select 400 hitters club, who in 32 stepped into the biggest managerial shoes in baseball when John McGraw retired and went on to win three pennants in his first five years. Or a Carl Hubble, who once tossed 24 consecutive victories. At the 1934 All-Star Game, King Carl proceeded to strike out Hall of Famers Ruth, Gehrig, Fox, Simmons, and Cronin in order in the first two innings. Yes, these were giants in name and in deed. Mel Ott, the little guy who was signed to a giant contract when he was 16 and went on to set a National League career record of 511 home runs. The next National Leaguer to approach that number was also a giant. In 1951, a strong, smiling, agile youngster raced into the polo grounds, running out from under his hat. They called him the Say Hey Kid, and few knew then the dimensions of greatness for which he was destined. Few knew in those early days that in years to come, he'd be known as the incomparable Willie Mays. What's a giant? A giant is a moment. It is an electrifying second jammed with emotion, paralyzing thrill, the boundless joy that goes along with accomplishing the impossible. August 12th, 1951, the Giants are 13 and a half games in back of the front-running Dodgers. October 3rd of the same year finds the same Dodgers in the polo grounds in the final game of a three-game playoff, leading 4-2 to two in the bottom of the ninth with one out. I was there, and believe me, it was a giant moment. Okay, not taking any chances. Locks in without too big of a lead at second, but he'll be running like the window. Thompson hits one. Cracker throws. There's a long shot! Just three years after the shot heard round the world, the dream makers were at it again. 
Dusty Rhodes steered one pinch hit after another to clinch the flag at a niche among the immortal giants. That's four-game sweep of the Indians in the 54 series was a succession of dramatic moments. But by far the most sensational was one produced by the incredible Willie Mays. Vic Wirtz comes to bat. That's what a giant is. Nineteen fifty-eight, and everyone knows that the big cities on the coast are not to be denied major league participation. Baseball knows it. The Giants know it. At a meeting of our board today, they voted uh, permission for us to transfer the New York Giants franchise to San Francisco. Does that mean you will definitely do it? That's right. <laughs> Francisco, warm and friendly. Glitter, glamour, and charm. Filled with the old world romance and new world ideas that make visitors want to start life anew in the shadow of the Golden Gate. Gorgeous, gregarious, scenic San Francisco. A fun-loving, big league town where giants come to play. But a big league town needs a big league ballpark. And so quick as a wink, or maybe two, up went beautiful Candlestick Park. And on came the giants. And out came the people. And it didn't take them long to find out what a giant is. They saw the Giants as a big league, fence-busting, pennant-contending ball club, adding a fresh new spark to an already sparkling city. And soon after, the Giants responded by rewarding their new home with a pennant in 1962. After whisking the flag away from their old nemesis, the Dodgers, in another dramatic playoff, the Giants went into battle with their other old neighbor, the Yankees. Chuck Hiller made the big moment for the Giants. It was the National League's first series Grand Slam home run. Frustrated by a series of rainouts, the teams battled through the longest series in history. In the final game, the Giants had the potential tying and winning runs racing over the plate when Bobby Richardson made a grab of a line drive. He came down hard but happy. That ended the game and gave the series to the Yanks. The Giants were still looking for their first West Coast World Championship. But by now, San Francisco was the Giants' town, and Candlestick was home. Folks found it easy to come out and visit their new heroes. A magnificent network of well-marked modern highways stretched right to Candlestick's front door. Abundant parking space right in the shadow of the stadium meant that Dad wouldn't have to miss half the game while he looked for a place to abandon the family car. Plenty of bus transportation has been another convenience for San Francisco fans. Both charters and regular bus routes fast become a popular way to get to the game. And in the city by the bay, what better way to get out to the park than by boat? Boats leave from Fisherman's Wharf for most games and dock just a short walk from the park. And so the word was, let's go see the Giants. 
Out at the park, words were in plentiful supply. In between the cheers and excitement, you could hear the rattle of typewriters, immortalizing in word the exploits of Mays, Marichal, McCovey, and company. Here is where the sports writers of San Francisco brought the hit, the play, the game, and the season into verbal focus. Through their words, the fans made contact with their team. They got to know the club's management, Horace Stoneham, giant president and giant fan. The name Stoneham has been synonymous with the name Giants for over half a century. Years of victory, tears, and fun. Exciting Giants. Chubb Feeney, giant vice president, a member of the important National League Rules Committee. And Charles H. Stoneham, better known as Pete, represents his family's third generation of giant leadership. But like all baseball fans, the names they cared most about belonged to the men on the field. And of course, one name stood out. In San Francisco, they never really knew him as the Say Hey Kid. To them, he's Willie Mays, superstar. His feats in the field, on the bases, and at bat make Mays the complete ball player. His 505 home runs make him the number five swatter of all time. And no one even pauses to doubt that Willie will shortly be the National League's all-time home run champion. Giant Secretary Eddie Brannick even suggests that he'll scare the daylights out of Ruth 714. In 14 years, Willie has loped over 34 miles, just running out his home runs. Mays is the unquestioned leader of the Giants on and off the field. Where Mays is, is where Giants come to play. Candlestick Park soon proved to be a breeding ground for the stars. New personalities began to spring up to join the incomparable maze. More home run power appeared in the person of the six foot four inch Willie McCovey. Big Stretch took the league by storm and established his own homer chasing army in back of the right field fence. With the vision of McCovey's big swing planted in their minds, opposing pitchers had plenty to think about. Juan Marichal was on his way to becoming the league's most stylish and accomplished right-hander. Marichal had it all. Blazing speed, superb control, a quick curve, change of pace, and a motion that looked like a straw man in a hurricane. And big number 30, Orlando Cepeda. Together with Mays and McCovey, he gave the Giants one of the toughest one, two, three punches in the league. Down at third base, another star was on the rise. Jim Ray Hart was proving himself one of those rare big finds. With power and hustle to spare, this kid was showing people he liked the big leagues, meant to be around for a while. And there was Tom Haller, savvy behind the plate. And power in the clutch. Jimmy Davenport, the kid with the golden glove. And the Alou brothers, Jesus and Matty. These were the giants of San Francisco. And many of them rose to rookiehood and stardom right here in San Francisco. But giants aren't born. They grow and train their way to candlestick. They do their learning and getting into shape at a training base where health and sunshine are bywords. Beautiful Arizona. 
While they're in the sunny Southwest, the Giants are provided with the most beautiful modern quarters ever offered to any team in training. Magnificent Francisco Grandi Hotel, a glamorous resort built, owned, and operated by the Giants. Francisco Grandi is a year-round tourist resort, exemplifying the best in southwestern architecture, charm, hospitality, and comfort. Tradition is the country itself, giant country, and elegance is Francisco Grandi. luxurious rooms, food designed for the taste of the gourmet, catering to the budget of the average family, a championship golf course, swimming and wading pools in the shape of a ball and a bat. Well, even I couldn't lose in that baseball pool. Yes, it's a little different from the grunt and grind days of Matthewson and Marquardt. In the old days, if it wasn't drudgery, it wasn't training. But to today's modern giants, streamlined training techniques leave plenty of time for relaxation. After a few weeks of shaping up, it's off to Phoenix. About an hour's drive. some more shiny new architecture. In this modern new stadium, the Giants meet teams from both leagues during the exhibition season. Meanwhile, the paint brushes and polish have done their work. It's a new season, and everything's ready. Opening day at Candlestick. And before the game, the most popular spot in town for season ticket holders is the Stadium Club. Good food in comfortable surroundings. And then... Another pennant race is off to a flying start. And the Giants are right in the thick of it. But according to the profits and pundits, that's just temporary. No pitching, they say. Sure, Marichal will win his 20, but then what? They'll be dead for the All-Star break. Well, Mr. Franks had other ideas, and so did Bob Shaw. And Ron Herbal. And Bob Bowler. A fellow named Frank Lindsay with a fantastic earned run average of 1.43. And And Masanara Murakami, who had more problems with the language than with opposing batters. The Giants were shaping up in the field, too. Dick Schofield at short. Lanier at second base were turning in the sparklers that cut off opposing rallies. Len Gabrielson, both with his bat and in the field, was hustling toward his biggest year and filled a big gap when Cepeda's injured leg kept him on the bench. 
that season, all the profits were heroes. Nearly everybody was in first place at once, and the dog fight was on. Pitching, fielding, sure. But the big weapon at Candlestick was the long ball. Between them, Mays and McCovey were on their way to better than 90 home runs. McCovey with 39, Mays with 52. In the process, Mays was flying through a flock of records. His 52 is an all-time giant record for one season. By the time he played game number 2,000 in his career in September, Willie had joined Ralph Kiner as the only other National Leaguer to hit 50 or more home runs in two different seasons. On one dramatic August night at Shea Stadium, Willie tied Lou Gehrig's lifetime total of 493 and Kiner's National League one-month record of 16 with one blow. A few days later, he set the new record at 17. Giants were having big long ball seasons too. Hart with 23 home runs. Haller, 16. In late August, the Giants took off on a torrid stretch during which they won 17 of 18. So the team the Prophets picked for fourth or fifth made it a fight right down to the last two days. On the final day, as on every final day at Candlestick, there was a celebration. The first winner is Lou Marie Blanco, 8th Frankfort, Daly City. the day the Giants say thanks to the fans of San Francisco. It's a day of giveaways and fun, pan it or no. 
It's a day when the Giants say there are more pennants to be won, more records to be set, more Mathesons and Mays, and Hubbles and McCoveys, and Otts and Hearts and Marichals. It's a day when the Giants say we'll be back next year to see it all happen. We hope you will be too. Well, now do you know what a Giant is?